Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, social media, pop culture. Sports, news, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Meliotis, and Twitter goes PD Beats. My guest is an actress. You can see her in the upcoming Netflix movie that's coming out on Friday, um, which is about Motley Crue, a biopic of Motley Crue, The Dirt. Um, we are with Courtney Dietz. Courtney, welcome Hi. to Pop Turnative. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. Um, you know, whether you're an actress, a writer, a producer, a director, you're a storyteller. When did Courtney Deeds decide that she wanted to be a storyteller? Ah. Um Okay, so I I ended up acting at like pretty old. So I didn't get my first agent until I was um how old am I now? I think I was 19 when I got I got my first agent. Okay. Um, I don't like to say my age, so I, I've it's been common. I went, so I um, I would do like little things here and there, but I cheer. I was a cheerleader for 11 years, and I cheered at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And after I left Louisville my freshman year, I um, went back home to. I'm from Virginia, and I went to a conservatory for performing arts there in DC. Wow. In Georgetown. And then I left the, then I dropped out of the conservatory. So I dropped out of school twice. And that's when I I got signed by my agents. And I originally got signed by my agents in Atlanta. And I started like gaining traction and and kind of working there and meeting a lot of the um, community there. And I I started to really enjoy my time in Atlanta. So I decided to get a pick up and move to Atlanta. So I, that's kind of how I got to here and now I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles now. A lot. <laughs> Atlanta's rocking though. I've had a lot of actors and actresses from Atlanta. I've had like Kevin L. Johnson. He was on Ozark. Haley Lovett from The yeah. Gifted. I, I love Haley. Yeah. She's yeah. been on my show. Yeah. I love her. No, she's it was, awesome. It was, uh, it was really, it was a really cool uh, interview. And we were talking about, yeah, like Atlanta's rocking. Like there's a lot going on. It there is. Right it is. I love Atlanta so much. That's like my, ho- that's what I call home now. Um, it's it's the best place ever. I was there for four years, right. and my agents there are incredible. My friends are like I all my friends in Atlanta are actors, and the sense of community is insane. It's like nothing that you can ever describe. And that's what I kind of wanted to wanted to to like talk about because I find you know whether Atlanta or like L A like a lot of you know actors and actresses they're they're like really good friends and. You know, they, they hang on to support each other on, like, social media. But then, like, yeah. I find that funny because there's, there's like, competition too, right? Like, like No, I don't think that it's I – don't, I don't consider it competition. I think that at a young age I did consider it competition. It took me, like, a long time for me to, like, realize that, like, the way I look at it now is um, the moment that something's written, like, a script or sides or whenever you get an audition, it's written for a specific person and you have to, like, trust the process. So, like, whether it's you or whether it's not, it's written for the right person, you know? So it's not a competition. It's just who it's supposed to go to. It's supposed to go to just one person. It could be you, it could be not you, you know? I, do you think people don't realize, like, the life of kind of, like, like acting is, like, auditioning? Like, that's what you do, like, most yeah. of the time, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I had a teacher who was, like, uh, working actors are actually, like, auditioning actors. Like, we're constantly just, like, going in to auditions um, until our next job. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a constant battle of, like, having to stay on top of your weekly auditions. Like, having to make sure that you're um, – because, like, it's not, like, an every single day, like, normal job. You don't have to, like, get up and go to work from uh, 10 to 5 every day. You have to, like – prep and you have to be ready to go and if you have an in-person or you have to self-tape you just have to make sure that you're always ready so that also it comes up like when you're and when it's slow like some people um like myself i like to if if i'm not auditioning all the time i'll like go like and read screenplays or i'll read books or like i'll like i think that like life experiences are really huge when it comes to acting and like bringing it to the screen Absolutely. Well, speaking of the screen, uh, screen, something is mm-hmm. la- something's launching very soon. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I want to talk about that. You starred in the Dirt, which is the Motley Crue biopic that's launching on Netflix Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You must be and excited. The- I'm super excited for it. I um, 
I'm really excited. I, I got to, that was actually shot in New Orleans and it was my first time working in New Orleans. So, um, it was, it was like the, the best experience. And I play Tommy Lee's little sister, Athena. Um, so I'm pretty much like, I don't want to like talk too much about it or like give it away. Cause it's going to be really exciting for everyone. But I, I'm pretty much like developing the family, like the sense of family, like, um, what Tommy's Lee, Tommy Lee's life was before Molly grew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just like kind of a, a jokester and it was my first time cussing on screen. <laughs> so we'll see if they kept that in. That was exciting for me, which is like strange. You know what I find funny? It's like when you, when, when I used to see like interviews with like, um, actors and actresses when they were younger, the, the question they'd always ask was like, was like your, your first, like what, your screen kiss was, that was your first kiss ever. Like something like that. What about the swearing? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I've wondered, like that never was ever answered. They like, I see people, <laughs> it's so awkward when they ask about like dating, like on sets and stuff. And it's like, yeah. what about the swearing? Like, you never think about that. No, it, it, it is. It's strange because like, I play very young. Like, I'm not going to say how old I am. I'm 20 something. And, but I play really young. <laughs> I play really young. And so whenever I'm, on set i'm usually playing like 15 or 16 and in this i'm i'm playing 16 and i just usually like most of the stuff that i do it's for a younger crowd and so i've never cussed or anything and so when they were like yeah like improv say whatever you need to do like just do it um and so i did (laughs) and it was so strange and afterwards i was like looked at jeff tremaine who's like the director and i was like is that okay is that am i allowed to say that he was like yeah do more of it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean the it's the, the it's the it's guy, Motley Crue. It's Motley it's Crue, like, of course. Yeah, I remember so. I went to go see Motley Crue. It was one of my first concerts when I was younger. really. Yeah, so you must be so excited. I I think I was too young to be at that show. Yeah, I mean they're <laughs> they're insane. But it was I think amazing. I'm, st- I'm still too young to be at that show. Like, uh, I mean, uh, reading this reading the script, the first thing that happens, you're like. You'll see. Like I, I read it and I was like, "What is going on already?" Do you find it's a good time in general for kind of the biopic? I mean, it happens to be like Queen I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody came out. Rhapsody, right? yeah, and yeah. Rocket um, Man about Elton John comes out. Elton soon. John, yeah. It's a good yeah, time for a biopic, no. right? It is. People are loving it, and um, I think that the way that this script particularly is written, it's gonna show like s- such different lights of the band and each of their lives i think they're, they do a really good job of like showing and developing their relationships and their characters in this so i'm excited i'm excited to see it absolutely what has been so far i mean a two-part question i mean you know you've been able to work on some really cool projects in the past what are some projects that in like a what project were you like proud of in the past that um maybe was something that wasn't like the biggest thing you've ever done, but kind of like a passion project or something you're really proud of. And then B, the second part was what were some um, shows or movies that you've done that it's kind of like, Oh, well, I guess as of now, like people are going to kind of recognize me from this as well. So kind of like the one you're really, um, cause I find when people, when I want to ask this question, you know, people say, you know, people recognize me from this movie and I'm really proud of that, but I did this really cool short movie that people don't really know about and like changed my life. Like, so what, talk about some of the projects you've done. I think that there's been a lot of life changing projects that I've done in the past. Like, um, I'm, I'm really excited for an upcoming project that I have coming. I don't even know when it's going to come out because our director and editor and every, everything, he's like our Scriptwriter, he's the everything. It's his baby. It's uh, it was my first passion project. Um, so it was my first like indie indie film, and it's called Beast Beast. Alec Baldwin is producing it, um, and we shot that in Georgia in Peachtree City for a wa- long time. And the hours were long. Everyone loved. What, the thing that like changed my life about this set was everyone loved what they were doing on set. There was not a single person complaining. Everyone wanted to be there. Everyone loved this movie this project and like everyone loved each other so there was just so much love that was poured into this film and it like covers the lives of three different people and they're com- they're so different um they're so con- contrasting towards each other and i don't know it just it it was I, we came in at like some days we had five at night till five in the morning shoots wow. and then some nights yeah and some nights because it we shot in a high school for a lot of the time and um and then, like, my first day, I 
had a 10 a.m. call time and I got there and everyone's having family um, like breakfast together. And we're all like talking about the script and like breaking it down. And then after breakfast, we would go to our respective like areas and go study. Like I didn't have to actually go back onto set until like uh, one, one, like, so I got there at 10 and didn't have to get on set until one. And I would go up to my room and study. And so would my co-stars or so would everyone else on the set. And then we would come together and do rehearsal and then work. And then like our director, Danny, he just like, he was an, an actor's director. Like he likes to hear us out and he likes to like, um, like, I don't know how to describe it. He like wants to see what we want to bring our, like he wants us to be the characters, you know, he wants to like show what we bring to the character. And so he like would talk to us about each scene before we went for like ever. And I think it's going to be gorgeous. I just got to see um, some of it. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And then um, there's like other projects that I worked on that. Like I, I worked on a film in Charleston um, called Conrad and Michelle. And that came out on Lifetime in September and September. And that changed my life in the sense that I got to work in Charleston for a while and I met some of my best friends. Um, and the girls on that set were just so empowering. Like the women, like one of them, like Kelly, her name's Kelly Lamore Wilson. Um, she like got me this like women in film bracelet like the other day, like where she's still one of my best friends. And like, they just em empowered me. Like every single day we woke up, we were excited to do what we were doing. We loved each other. We just... It was like ray of sunshine coming from every direction and it was just such a fun set what do you kind of so. what do you that that's interesting that you said that about going back to kind of like um the networking aspect of it how much like because i know you talk i so when i did uh, i did a few interviews um with guys from hell's hellfest right so okay yeah i interviewed um you know matt mercurio who played um asher and I yeah. interviewed Christian James, who played Quinn, and they said yeah, it was like, really nice. yeah, and it was yeah. basically like they said, like the moment they kind of met each other, they were like best friends. And when they weren't yeah. like, filming scenes, do you think that that's an important aspect of of it when you get into it, or do you kind of? Just I see think it as I think definitely like I I've never worked on a set like you hear all these horror so stories and like sorry I just stuttered um, but you hear all these stories about how awful people are and I've never had that experience mm -hmm. like every single set I'm on I'm so thankful to be there and everyone else is too like I've never experienced someone being like a diva or um, just anyone being mean or anything like that and every set I'm on e even if they're not like my best friends usually there's a reason why we were cast together. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a reason why, um, like they knew that we could probably work together. And so like, it just, it just flows most of the time. It just clicks. Do, do you find, um, cause you know, you've been in TV shows, you've done movies. I mean, I find there's like, sometimes like a little bit of like a tug of war between the two sometimes it almost feels like sometimes they compete with each other especially with netflix right where netflix yeah. kind of no is known for putting all these shows but now yeah. like bird box triple frontier the dirt all these yeah. big netflix movies are coming out yeah there's like prime content right now on netflix and and all these like streaming hulu everything um it i i don't have a preference but i've done a lot i've done more in film so like i i know more about like being on movie sets um and i love being on shows don't get me wrong but like i would choose um like a actually i i don't know if i would choose i don't, I don't, I don't think you're allowed to, i don't think you have to choose between i mean yeah. i like them both equally i mean i asked someone yeah. which so i Neil Neil Brown Jr. Before he went on SEAL Team, I had him to talk about like he was on Straight Out of Straight Out of Compton, right? And he's on SEAL Team right now. And I said, what, like, do you kind of prepare different for like a TV show than you would a film? And he kind of said, he's like, I mean, a TV show, it's kind of like it's it's like a mini, like an episode of a TV show is like a mini film, right? It's just it's yeah. especially on shows like SEAL Team where every episode's different, right? Yeah, so it's like I feel like the prep is different. Um but also like I for movies it's like um you know like you typically have a longer time before you have to go on to set. So mm -hmm. like with shows you can find out you book it on a Friday and have to be on set on Monday. Mm -hmm. Um so usually you have a little bit of a longer time. Absolutely. Um but like I like for I worked on a show called Queen America. I was like on three episodes of 
the show, which I actually got cut out of all of them. I was a recurring guest star on it. But I, what, I, I learned a lot from that show because it was a word perfect show. And, um, and they shot it because it was streaming on Facebook watch. They shot it out of order. And the, my first episode was shot last and my last episode was shot first. Mm -hmm. So I went into my first day doing my last episode. And then, so it was just like all over the place, which is cool. And like, I was also, also shooting, um, what I was just talking about beast beast at the same time. So in between shooting, um, those episodes, I would go on set for Beast Beast and like one day something I, like this, is, I'll say this forever. It was like the most testing part of my career so far is I, I had um, a night shoot for, it was my last day of shooting for Beast Beast. And we had a five at night till five in the morning shoot. And we've been doing that all week. And I wrapped at 5am and I had to go straight to set at 7am to Queen America. And so, yeah, so it was really wow. testing and but it also like taught me a lot and I got to set at seven and I, cause we were shooting in Peachtree city, which is like an hour and a half away from Atlanta. And so I got straight to set and like, I just really had to use my technique and like what I've learned in the past and like what my teachers have taught me and, and my coaches, you know? Um, so it was, it was awesome that I, I learned that I can get through that. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned learning experiences. What have been some learning experiences in the last year, whether it's, you know, um, for yourself, because I find maybe not learning it doesn't have to be a learning experience like on set or during a project. But I find like any learning experience in life, you know, can be kind of adapted to any kind of circumstance or job or anything. So talk a little think, bit about that. I think I learn something new every single day. <laughs> like Absolutely. I don't know. There's there's I mean there's experiences with friendships. There's experiences with traveling. There's you know like life opening or life changing books that you read, you know, like there's, um, all sorts of things. And yeah, I got to do a lot of that this year. I got to do a lot of growing this year. I, um, I got to travel. I went to, to France for a while. I got to work on like some of the best sets of my entire life. So like, I can't really generalize life changing, you know, or like life lessons because there's been so many. Um, the biggest thing that I've learned is just like, I have to, I have to, do what's best for myself and like you're I'm allowed to be selfish sometimes and then also like my biggest thing that I'm working on now is um prioritizing like uh social situations to like studying and working and this and that and then also like I am my family's the biggest thing to me my sister's my best friend I live with her here and I just need more family in my life like that's my they they're the reasons why I am who I am so like I just need to be my main family all the time. No, absolutely. That is, yeah. that's, that's amazing. I, I think we're yeah. going to, we're going to wrap up soon, but Courtney, thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> thank you for having me. Closing remarks, plug away. Like where can people follow you uh, on social media? Oh yeah. My Instagram is Courtney Dietz. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what else. Uh, Twitter's Courtney Dietz. And sometimes I'm funny. Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> That's Come awesome. check me out. Watch well, the movie on Friday. Yeah, all the best with the dirt and all the best Thank in you. the future as well. Thank you. And uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop for previous episodes, Spotify, iTunes, um, for the audio only. So until next time, this is Courtney Dietz and PD Beats Bye, guys. signing off. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.